Hey everybody, this is Uncle Doug. I'm coming to you uh, again from the basement of uh, one of the ministry houses here in Liberty, Missouri. And uh, I want to comment just a little bit on churchianity, on this institutional church system. And I um, was watching a video the other day, and it, it was interesting. I thought I'd use a clip out of this video to share with you and to talk about church. So uh, the following is a clip from Casey Neistat. He's one of the fastest growing YouTubers right now. Uh, his channel is around 5 million subscribers. And um, he had a video recently where he got to fly, uh, I think, to Australia. He flew on Etihad, and uh, which is a great airline. I flew on that over to the Middle East a few years ago. And uh, they bumped him up to the first class seat on his way back. And he was all excited about this $21,000 ticket seat that he got to sit in and did a video about it. And uh, is a great uh, storyteller and filmmaker. But his video within a week got 20 million views. And he uh, had a little... Uh, He's got a little snippet here talking about how he thinks it did that, why he thinks it did that. And I want to translate some of what he's saying over to uh, to the church. So uh, with uh, fair use, um, uh, appreciate um, Casey's wisdom, and we're going to put this in here. If you're interested in his channel, you can go to YouTube. It's Casey Neistat, N-E-I-S-T-A-T, -E uh, Casey, C-A-S-E-Y. Uh, but you, you'll find him all over if you don't already uh, aren't already subscribed to him. Uh, interesting channel for video production and and just general filmmaking um, interest. Anyway, uh, watch the clip and then uh, we're, I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about it just a little bit. Thanks. In other news, my airplane seat movie it's about to cross twenty million views. Twenty million. That's insane. That video has been up for. Seven days, 20 million views in seven days. That's like five million views a day. I know it's not five million views. What that also means, which is nuts, is that is now the second most watched movie of all the 650 videos or whatever on my YouTube channel. So I just want to take one second and talk about viral videos. Now, I have touched on this before in this channel, but it, it, it's a popular subject. It's especially relevant since I just had like a wildly viral video. Viral videos. Viral videos are almost impossible to manufacture, to actually create. Now the flip side of that is that nothing can do for a YouTube channel what a viral video can do for a YouTube channel. Bike Lanes, which was like my first really viral video on this channel, it blew my channel up. In the seven days since I've released this 20 million view banger, I've gotten almost a half a million new subscribers. Viral videos are hugely powerful, and that's why people are always pursuing them. All right, why did this one go viral? Before I get into this, I wanna say, this is why I think this particular video went viral, not a recipe for viral videos in general. A broad, abbreviated examination of why $21,000 first class airplane seat went viral. Number one, zeitgeist. Right now, like this idea of opulence and indulgence and over-the-topness creates a climate where a title that says $21,000 airplane seat, that's interesting, that's compelling. What kind of a world do we live in where a one-way airplane seat costs twice as much as the worldwide median household income? Timing. There's a lot of bad news right now. There's this US election which is a mess. There's the conflicts taking place in the Middle East and Syria. There's global terrorism, there's ISIS. There's all of these just terrible things dominating the news cycle. And when something fun and harmless and playful and interesting and sort of newsworthy pops up, everybody just jumped on it. General, this is something like a fancy airplane seat. The whole world's interested in this. It was written about in South Korea and in New Zealand. And in and in New Zealand. It was written about in Canada and it was written about in Saudi Arabia. This stupid story about an airplane seat was general enough to appeal to most of the world. Which is a nice segue into the last factor, 
innocuous. It was perfectly innocuous. There was nothing offensive or harmful or bad about that video at all, which meant it was safe. For all the press outlets and soccer moms that posted it on Facebook and shared it, everywhere, there were no swear words, there was nothing gross, there was nothing yucky, there was nothing offensive about that to anyone. When you combine all those factors with like a little bit of funny and interesting and well-told story, and then a lot of it of luck, that's how that viral video came to be. So I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, what seems obvious to me and obvious to you probably is that this formula that Casey lays out, as I was watching it, I'm like, oh, that's what the church has done. Okay? The zeitgeist is about prosperity, about money, about success, about whatever. So, uh, or in, in, in the other branch of churchianity, it's about... Uh, feelings and manifestations and spirituality and over the top uh, ex you know experiences whatever it is they're chasing they can be successful if they hit the right button the timing is right their message is general enough to appeal to a lot of people and it's innocuous meaning it's inoffensive it doesn't make anybody have a reason to run away or at least not enough people that it that it doesn't keep building their numbers the problem with this is that the gospel isn't innocuous and it isn't general it applies to everybody and everybody should be interested in their salvation and eternal life and heaven and hell and God and all that kind of stuff I struggle with how Casey has a billion views, 500, 5 million subscribers, adding another million seems like every month or two, a billion views, and uh, but the truth of the gospel is suppressed, uh, pushed to the side and only a tiny little remnant wants to hear it. Now, Casey does a great job of making cute, funny, playful, slightly thoughtful, entertaining videos. So he is general, typically innocuous, and um, has good timing and, and tells a good story. And... Um, has a bigger congregation than any pastor in America, for that matter, I think, is reaching a whole lot of people. <sighs> Got better ratings, I mean, more viewers than a lot of TV shows on, on regular broadcast TV. My point is not to compete with him or to believe that it's even possible. We're not in a position right now where the interest is there, the timing is there, or that the message of the cross is innocuous. Now in the middle of tribulation, when everything's falling around you and you're desperate for some answers, maybe that'll change. But right now it's a remnant that wants to hear the truth. It's a remnant that wants to hear about being crucified daily and giving all you have to the poor and, and, and caring for those in need around you and uh, sacrificing um, It's a crazy world. It's a crazy world. The Lord said that they would tickle your ears, that they would give you what you want, that they would sell whatever can be mass produced and as many people as possible can buy it. And that is comfy, greasy grace, once saved, always saved. Don't have to change. Don't have to be different. Just come to church and tithe. And um, we'll entertain you. Woe to those false shepherds. Woe to those false shepherds. The problem with America right now is the pastors. Always, always is the pastors. 
Anyway, thanks for listening. I hope this gives you something to think about. Lots of verses. Jeremiah 34 comes to mind right off. Lots of places where uh, he's going to whack the tar out of the pastors that are looking for lots of people and lots of money and uh, looking out for their own welfare. God bless you all. May the Lord come quickly. In the name of Jesus, amen.